And as we begin our new series, Building Community, we're speaking with Doug Findlater, one of the central characters in the whole process by which the people on the west side of the lake wound up with their own municipality. So where was the stepping off point for the whole process that led to what we now know as the city of West Coast? Well, it, it was a long process and there had been uh, uh, three previous efforts to looking at whether the West Side should incorporate and I think four changes. studies. For a total of four. In, in the mid-70s, just around the time I moved there, somebody was working on that and there was really no public interest or support. It died. In the early 80s, uh, a gentleman named Harold Lyon who was actually an artist, uh, but uh, he actually had a committee that looked at incorporation that uh, uh, had some facts and figures. It went to referendum and it was defeated 89% against it. Okay, was it? Over, over, people overwhelmingly did not want more government. The whole idea was the expense, I think. Well, it just more regulation as well. It, you know, the West Side's always uh, been a little bit of the, the land of the free. We still don't have a parking meter anywhere on the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think we're a little more independent than uh, this side of the lake. So there was that element in the, uh, that, that was defeated rather soundly. Another group headed by uh, Ken Somerville and uh, Bryden Winsby in the 90s, uh, first, uh, 92 to 94, I believe, uh, did a study, a, vi a very viable study that led to a referendum and it was still defeated 66%. Right. They did not want to incorporate. This was around the time when I first moved the community and it, d it seemed to me crazy that you'd have an, a, an area with that many people that wasn't incorporated. But you were one of the crazy people. You were against it too. I was against it both those times. And in fact, when a new, I had been on the committee so with Bride. Why? What, what was the main I had reason? been on the committee with Bri, with Winsby and, and, and company, and I sort of represented the nay factor. Right. Uh, again, it was uh, more government, more regulation, more cost. Uh, we're doing fine as we are. Why would you change? A very complacent kind of view. But you do start to see under the, in that scenario development taking place kind of higgledy-piggledy. Well, that's where I started to change. And I, I, another committee was struck uh, an issue, by the minister, by George Abbott, actually, in the, uh, in the early 2000s. Because I'd been involved in the studies before and they knew I could be neutral, uh, I was made the chair of that West Side Governance Committee. It, that was a very long study. It took us four years. Uh, it was very complex. Uh, step by step. We actually spent a fair bit of provincial money doing it too. Midway through that process, about, I would say about 2005, 2006, I watched the growth in our community. I mean, there was a real boom in, in the mid-2000 uh, uh, period where uh, we built up the hillsides, we built everywhere the, under the regional district. It was not build, uh, planned as well as it could be. I was schooled, I was educated by that time in what a, a municipal government could do versus a regional district. And the, and the powers are considerably different right. in terms of bringing all the services under one roof, asking for contributions from developers uh, and, and others, from getting grants. I right. mean, it, regional districts are somewhat limited in the grants they can get. Our water systems were independent, yet we had water issues. So you can bring that all under one roof with local government. So I became an advocate so, so it, to become yeah. uh, under local Amazingly, government. Amazingly, the community has a shift of mind at the same time it's literally going on in your own mind. Yes. That we're, we're there now. Yep. This has to happen. So we went to referendum. Of course, it was a two-question referendum. Uh, that that was complex too. Right. We uh, uh, the, the, uh, the was first question. To incorporate. No. No. It whether was do you want to to move from regional district status to being under the local government act? Okay. First question that passed eighty four percent. Second question: Do you want to join Kelowna, or do you want to incorporate as a separate municipality? I believe it was about fifty two to forty eight to incorporate. It was very close, and it and it at that time it did tend to be the north end closest to the bridge wanted to join Kelowna and the south end, the west bank end wanted to go its own way. Although, you know, there were people on both sides in each right. area. It was about two third uh, joined Kelowna on the north half, right. two third incorporate on the western half. I would say today 
we are well past that. There's still people, that, there's still a few people that say we should have joined Kelowna. Right. Uh, if you ask some members of Kelowna Council today, they think by not incorporating with us, they dodged a bullet. And I think there's a fair bit of satisfaction on the west side that they have their own council and their own, they can take their own issues to their own council and probably get something done. Whereas if we were part of a much larger mix, uh, the world might pass us by. So it gets through on that basis, but had it not, uh, and now it's all conjecture, but it would seem that ultimately the province would have just enforced uh, it. It is possible. It. The, the province, uh, if you recall, the province forced the expansion of Kelowna and Kamloops in 1973. I was in the province at that time, that was the Barrett government, and they expanded both those communities a million miles in every direction. Kelowna to the Mission, and to Rutland to and Lake Country, and yeah. Kamloops similarly all, all over the place. Since that time and the angst that that caused, the province and the municipal affairs people adopted a policy of facilitating what should be done rather than forcing. And that's what right. we were told all the way through, even our last governance process, that they would not force it, that they were they were looking at uh, facilitating, helping us, providing grants, being generous and so on. They, they said they would not force it. So, But it may be now, we've just got so big at 35,000, I mean, West Kelowna right. alone, without the WFN population, is is just about the size of Penticton. Okay, so... <laughs> So you come around to thinking, yes, we oh, should yeah. incorporate. Now it's happened. Now, now you see what's what's occurred since then. How does it sort of match up with your vision of what would happen? It's beyond my wildest dreams. You know, when I was mayor for ten years, so I I have to be. Uh, happy with what happened for the most part. We didn't get everything done that we wanted to, uh, but you know, all the, all the plans, all the funding, everything is in place to go forward. It takes, t it takes a long time yes. is one thing I've learned. Uh, we do have major infrastructure projects underway, roads, sidewalks, lighting, water treatment plant, uh, new parks, all those things are moving where they should be with a, si a municipality of our size. Granted, we're 11 years old. It takes a while to do to build yeah. Rome. It takes a while to build the reserves. Our reserves could be higher if we were older. They would be. We would have put more money in the bank. But it's kind of like a teenager doesn't have too many reserves, too much money in the bank. Uh, by the time they're 30, they may have some savings. So that's yeah. where we're moving. And you need that savings to back you up in the event of uh, uh, a, a difficult situation or to leave or grants is the other thing is where uh, but, reserves but can But seriously, help. you're saying things are things are going better in terms of governance than you even envisioned? Absolutely. I, uh, I, I hadn't even contemplated this. And certainly in terms of managing the growth, which, and I mean, we have lots of it, but the standards we have, uh, and whether they be road standards or subdivision standards or building standards or hillside development, all of those things, kind of the things that developers hate, but we have them and were, it's being done the right way right. because in the, in the last 10, 11 years, we, we discovered a lot of situations that were really untoward. They were done sloppily uh, and, and they would not be approved today. They, it right. was the Wild West. Having a, a new local government in place at the same time where you have an ongoing boom, it does give the opportunity to, to really build and shape a community more so than if it was in a stagnant Well, the powers, the powers that a municipality has, a local government has uh, over a rural government, a regional district, are considerably different. And the way you can manage your finances are considerably different. You can tax for different things. But also, in regional districts, everything is fund accounting. If it's, if it's um, uh, recreation, that stays in recreation. If it's uh, parks, it stays in parks. In the case of a, a city or a local government, you can move that money from parks and recreation or whatever if, it, if, if you need it for policing. Right. Or if you're flush with, you haven't spent your reserves on policing, you can actually move some of that over. Right. And, and I'm, I'm not saying we've ever done that, but I use that as an example. The flexibility around uh, moving yeah. funds around uh, is, is there with a city that you don't have in a regional district. What about the, the sort of spirit of the community? The, the, we, you still see those signs up, those 
handmade West Bank signs that yep. if you were to be charitable, you would say, oh, look at that community boosterism. But to me, it does look like a bit of a hangover from a battle that was lost about what to call it. Well, you know, should it be called West Bank or should it be called West Kelowna? And it, and it looks like some people are still miserable about that. Not very many. Uh, there's some people who still wish it was West Bank. I can tell you where the roots of this were. With uh, Again, I chaired the governance committee from from uh, up to 2006. The committee took a pass on what the name should be. We were asked by the minister, what do you want to call it? We took a pass on that, <laughs> simply because there was a large component of the folks on the committee that wanted to join Kelowna, so why give it a name? So we, we were silent on that. So the referendum passed to incorporate a no-name municipality. Uh, Minister Ida Chong uh, decided to call us West Side District Municipality. Ooh. She was the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Everybody hated that. <laughs> that was unanimous. It was awful. <laughs> and it, was conf it could be confused with part of uh, yes. another city uh, two hours away from us here, although it's spelled differently. So that was something that the First Council dealt with. It went to a, uh, an opinion poll, run like a referendum. Uh, the name West Kelowna won by a small margin. It was, it was another razor, one of those 50, 51, thin. 49. And there were a couple of other minor names, Okanagan Hills and something else in the mix. But um, So the council, and it was my very first council meeting as mayor, said, well, we have to respect the opinion of the people. And we applied to the uh, ministry to for a formal change of name. That was granted, and it became... Um, uh, a district. Uh, district of West Kelowna. Later on, when Christy Clark was our MLA, we were have, able to have, with her assistance, it renamed City of West Kelowna. And I think that sits well with most people now. Right. There are people who would still like West Bank. Absolutely. But I, I don't sense the vitriol. We also call our downtown area West Bank Center. We've honored that yes. name. Uh, we have... Um, the West Bank Historical Society, who is uh, does things to keep the live and na uh, the name alive. Uh, we have West Side Days. We have the West Bank Library. There are lots of things that are still West Bank. But you know, West Bank per se was not ever incorporated except uh, as uh, an irrigation district. The West Bank Irrigation District existed, but otherwise it was one of those. Informal yeah. names, and yet, and, and, yet, and yet even back unincorporated. then, when you drove into that business section, it was undoubtedly West Bank. From well, the, the signs are still there. Yeah, the, are. the 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 ones that were put up by the chamber, the West Bank Chamber of Commerce, right. uh, in its day. Yeah. Uh, and and the city takes care of those, plants flowers around them, spruces them up, and so on. Yeah. So, so we value that name. We tend to see it as focused in that southern end of the community. People in the northern end never had a strong relationship with the name West Bank, and we, right. uh, we so, 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 so and we've managed to find our way by with with a little bit of duplicity, if you want to call right. it that. So, what a journey, you know, as opponent to incorporation to to you know regional director on the on that uh, that committee for four years, um, mayor. Uh, Councillor, mayor, councillor, yeah. mayor, and councillor, councillor, <laughs> and and w with all of that happening, uh, are, are are you proud to have been so central? Yeah, to no, I, 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 it's been a very wild ride, and uh, but it's something where I feel that we've, you know, the community and I've had a big part of it have really achieved something. Uh, that that feels good, and I'm a I'm a one of those guys that uh, my my belief system is I want to leave the world a better place than uh, than uh, the way I found it in the first place, and I I think we are in a better place than uh, right. where, where we were two decades ago and a decade ago. I think so too. Thank Thanks you for coming and telling us all right, and thank you for watching Kelowna now.